Hello everyone, as you can see I'm here with the brand new Xbox 360 dashboard update. This is the fall 2011 dashboard with the Metro stylings. As you can see it does use the new tiled stylings that you've seen before with Windows Phone 7. And basically we're here right now on the home tile. And there are a whole bunch of uh, tabs up the top such as home, social, video games and so forth. As you can see, I'm going through them right now. I'm going to take a look at some new videos that are there in the video section. There's Game Marketplace and things like that. Apps are also new, as you can see here. And just to check that I am using the new one. This is the dashboard version that I'm using right now. This is, of course, the retail version. As you can see there, there is the settings for the Xbox companion app for Windows Phone. I don't have a Windows Phone, so unfortunately I can't use that right now. But as you can see, the settings do remain somewhat similar to the previous versions. Again, you can see the tiles through here. Now right across to the, to the left, you can see there is Bing. And you can search for things on the dashboard at any time. This does search just um, just the videos, the music, the games, and things like that. It doesn't search the web, as you'll see here as I'm typing in Neowin, a search, and it doesn't actually search the web. And it finds this game Ultraviolet. I don't know how that found Neowin from that. It's, it puzzles me, but oh well, that's how it is. But we'll show you how it actually works. You can search for uh, you can search for Dirt, Dirt the racing game. If you haven't tried it out, it's pretty good. I really do enjoy it. You can scroll down to Dirt, and it does show you uh, all the games that are related, as you can see here, like Grid, Grid, Dirt. I believe Dirt Three is later on. Now this is the game uh, page that you can see in the marketplace. You can view all sorts of information about the game here. So the online capabilities is right there, quite obviously stated. You can scroll down and read all about the game. You can access extras for the game, galleries, related games, everything about it basically. And really it's really nice to use and really quite um, functional with the new Metro interface. And I believe there are more uh, connect features as well there that you can you can try out. I don't actually have a connect, so unfortunately I can't test those. As you can see here, this is the main main screen. You can see the flicking content that tells you all about the Xbox and new promos and things that are out for that. Now we're going to game details here. You can see the um, overview of uh, the game Skyrim. You can view related games, all about the game. You can delete it or rate it if you feel like. You can play it. You can view the you can view the game's uh, SR rating. You can view extras and everything about about that. That will normally say install if you haven't installed it yet. You can view achievements for the game. When you do click on it, it does bring you to the old version of the achievement menu from the previous dashboard, but I don't really mind. It's not really not really a big deal. You also notice the share achievement button if you press X. And that will allow you to share it on Facebook with your friends. For example, if I wanted to say, oh, I've completed Standing Stone's achievement in Skyrim. I can share that with all my mates on Facebook and they can laugh at me for sharing that on Facebook, as I'm sure they would. Again, you can view extras for the game there, also view details. It's much nicer than what was previously there, you actually get a lot more information. There's also this quick play uh, menu here which shows you recently played downloaded items as it says. I haven't played anything new on the dashboard update, I just got it, so um, that's not going to be... Um, nothing new there really. This is the social tab with all your friends as you can see you can scroll across and the little avatars jump a bit you can see what games they're playing, you can join them if you go in you can invite them to parties, send messages all the things that you could previously do are still here which is really good to see. You can also change the uh, friend options and things like that you can compare the games as you have seen previously and again that uses the old style. And you can see their friends, it's another feature there. 
If you go into friends, you can of course see all your friends. They have nice new backgrounds, as you can see there, which is quite quite a good feature actually. It's much better than what was previously there. And most of these people would have updated to the Xbox dashboard before coming on. Again, you can view parties here. You can join. You can join parties. They will jump a bit. It's really nice. Quite well animated. Now here's a new feature with the Xbox dashboard, and that's beacons. Basically, this allows you to set games that you're currently playing, and then your friends will know, and then they can join you. For example, here it can, I'm, I'm being showed all the games that my friends have recently played. For example, four people have recently played Skyrim. I can then go into my beacons, set a beacon for that game. As you can see here, I'm setting one for Skyrim. I can share it to social networks if I like, so then people know. I can set the beacon. And then it's now set that I want people to play Skyrim, so people will know, hey, Scorpius V wants to play Skyrim, I'm going to join him in the game. And that's essentially the idea behind it. I'm not sure how many people will actually use it, but I can see it being useful for games such as Modern Warfare 3. And you can easily remove the beacon if you don't want people to know that you're playing Skyrim. I believe also on the web interface you can set times for beacons. For example, I'm going to be playing Modern Warfare 3 for three hours on Saturday. I think you can set that. Again, I'm just waiting to see if my friends will actually use this feature. I'm not sure that they will, but it is there and the idea behind it is good. You just need to wait for, of course, you just to actually use it. There's the social apps feature, which is here. Basically, that's just Facebook and Twitter. Um, maybe they're going to add more social apps in the future, or maybe it's my region that I'm only seeing a few. But I guess because apps is a new part of the dashboard that they will eventually add more. Again, you can go into your profile and you can customize things like your avatar, change the theme view, your achievements, your game score, your settings, change your gamer tag. There's a whole bunch of settings in there. It's basically the same as what was previously there. I should probably block out my email. You can view easily easy things such as your games here. It's nice and new, really obvious. Your gamer score, how many games you've completed. See, I've only actually completed L.A. Noir. That's right there, easy to see. You can see I'm going in Skyrim and things like that. It does seem to be smoother than it previously was to load the little icons, so that's a bonus. Of course, if you go in, you of course get the old interface there. Seems like it's bits and pieces of the new and the old interface, but that's not really a problem. I did like the old interface, so there you go. There are the video apps, of course, as you can see here. I haven't downloaded any video apps yet because, of course, I just got the dashboard. But if you get things, you can download things such as ESPN and Netflix and all the things there. I believe also the TV is really close to coming on here. If it's not on already, maybe it's my region again. Being in Australia with a US dashboard, it's kind of weird. As you can see, these are some of the apps that are coming. For example, the Sci Fi Channel, YouTube, MSN, things like that, you know, Vivo. HBO Go, all that stuff is coming. You can just download the app. It's right there on the on the screen for you to use. Of course, I can download an app right now, such as Netflix or Zoom. Not that any of these will actually work here in Australia, but you never know. Again, it's really interesting to see that they have included apps on the dashboard. As you can see, I'm in, installing one now. It's downloading Zoom. Once you've downloaded it, you never have to download it again, which is a real bonus, as long as you keep it on the actual dashboard. Now, for some reason, Zoom didn't actually work while I was trying to do it on the apps. Uh, it's probably because of my region. I can't actually access Zoom videos. So, unfortunately, um, that didn't work for some reason, so we're back here in the app marketplace. It's very strange that it didn't work, but as you can see, more of the Metro dashboard. You can see the games and apps and everything. Of course, there's always the uh, Y button for search, as you saw just then. You can search throughout the dashboard at any time just by pressing Y. It will open Bing, and bam, there you go, you can search. I can use the Zune Music Marketplace on 
in my location that's actually quite a bonus and that does take the uh, Metro stylings as well so it seems like they've updated some of the apps for Metro th uh, as well which not just the dashboard which is always good to see so you can go through and see all your downloads I actually haven't downloaded anything on Zoom yet but that is there if you want and it's good to see that they are pushing the Xbox 360 as not just a gaming console but a media console so you have all these features such as TV again that's going to be implemented in the dashboard really soon and here you can watch uh, videos you can even watch them from your network if you like using uh, media center if you have that set up on your Windows based PC again you can view tips here on Inside Xbox, you can view all the trailers and things. That's always good to see. Again, you can view the My, My Game section, which is again just updated. These are all the games that you have installed on your console right now, and all the ones that you've downloaded and paid for. It's not necessarily all the games you've played, that's just in your profile, but it does show you all the games that you have on your console hard drive right now. Again, you've already seen the game marketplace. And here's some more stuff in the apps as I browse through and take a look at everything on the dashboard. And these are all the ones that are just installed by default. There are no real settings, as I mean, no real new settings I was going through checking this stuff out. Basically, it's all the same. Now as you can see here, one of the new features on the Xbox dash dashboard is cloud saves and I went in and I watched um, the quick video giving me a quick overview of basically what cloud saves mean. mean. You can watch that on the dashboard yourself, I'm not going to show you the whole thing here. But basically if you scroll all the way across to settings and you go into your uh, system settings, if I ever get there, and into storage and you can see cloud saves is right there and you can enable or disable cloud saves. I'm going to enable it because I like the idea of the feature and I want my cloud saves to be able to be accessed across all my Xbox 360 consoles. Even if I'm at my friend's house, I could just sign in and get my, get my games. You are allowed 512 megabytes online. And basically to transfer your saves, you just have to go into your uh, games such as here, there's some game saves, they're not mine, so I won't transfer them. Here in Battlefield 3, I can go to my profile save data, I can click move or copy, depending on what I want to do, and move it to cloud saves. Then when I next play Battlefield 3, on any console, I will be able to simply choose cloud storage as one of the storage options in-game, and it will access my save online rather than store locally on my console. I believe you can still keep two copies of this or even three if you want to move it to a memory card as well. Unfortunately you are restricted, um, the same restrictions that apply with moving it to other storage devices do apply to moving it to cloud. That's again up to the game maker, it's not up to Microsoft to enable cloud storage on all games. So fortunately you're not allowed to do it on any on all games but if you start a new game and you want to save straight to the cloud that is also an option as it appears as a storage item now here's of course the TV settings I'm not sure why it's not here on the dashboard but they will be coming soon I guarantee you if you're in the right region and it's at the right time TV will be on your dashboard Again, there are not really many more settings to look at here. If you have a connect, you could do things such as connect voice controls, moving moving it around the dashboard with your connect. Fortunately, I don't have a connect with me, so I can't test those features as much as I would like to show them off. But yeah, this is the uh, the Xbox 360 Fall 2011 dashboard update with Metro Stylings complete with a whole bunch of new features and the brilliant new interface which I really like it's much easier to use than previous versions if you have an Xbox 360 you should be receiving the dashboard update right now and if you're in the preview program you will have accessed this for several weeks now so you will have already been enjoying the Metro um, 
yeah, please check out neowin.net for more content on the Xbox 360, their dashboard updates, and Windows 8 news. All of that's on the website, so I highly recommend you check that out. And thank you, everyone. Have a very nice day with the new dashboard.